Hello everyone, um, I just wanted to start off by saying sorry for the poor quality of my sound in the first video. Um, because of it I went out and bought a new mic and it seems to be doing much better. So I apologize for the poor quality, but uh, should be good from now on. Um, just wanted to uh, start by mentioning the um, goals of this video. The main goal is to move the hero around. In order to do that, we are uh, going to need to create a keyboard class. We're going to need to create a global variable for keyboard and initialize it. Again, this is so that you can use it anywhere. Uh, the keyboard and the mouse classes you will use pretty regularly, so having access to them in globals is nice. Um, then we're going to create our hero class, which will extend basic 2D, um, and then we will use the keyboard class to move the hero around. Um, so yeah, let's dive right in. Okay, um, so to begin with, what we're going to do is we're going to come into the engine here and we are going to add a folder called input. Input, uh, there's multiple kinds. Obviously, you have a keyboard, you have your mouse, you could have a controller, um, you could have all kinds of things. Um, you know, some games even take in sound. So, anyway, this is our input folder in our engine and we are going to add uh, the keyboard. Now, I am going to provide you with this code, uh, so check down in the uh, description for it. Um, I have the keyboard here, and I have McKey. So um, keyboard and key are both keywords. So anytime I run into an issue where a word I want to use is a keyword, specifically in mono game here, I just put MC in front. Why MC? Well, my last name's Macaulay, so I use the first two letters, MC. Um, you can use whatever you want, call them what you want, doesn't matter. Um, once you get these files, you won't have to do this part because the files I put up will have the proper, um, the proper namespace. Um, now, I'm going to go through these files because it's important that you understand what they do, but I didn't want you guys to have to type them all. Um, that would slow down this process a lot. So, um, first of all, you have the keyboard states. You have the new state and the old state. Um, the reason you have two states is one is keeping track of what's happening in this frame. That's the new keyboard. And then the old keyboard state is keeping track of the previous frame. Now, the reason that's important is because that way you can tell which keys were just pressed and which keys are being held down. Um, and then the same thing goes for this. Um, it's that you have all of the previously processed keys um, available to you, the current ones and the previous ones. Um, so uh, the update literally just takes in the keyboard from Mono Game. Again, that was the keyword I was talking about. So if you tried to name your thing your your class keyboard, uh, you could run into some some con conflicts, and then you'd always have to be careful to make sure you put in the namespace in front of everything to make sure you had the right keyboard each time. Um, Get state just pulls everything that's happening with your keyboard all at once. And we are setting that state into new keyboard. And then we are going to get the pressed keys. And that comes down into here. Um, this gets used later. I just didn't delete it. Uh, we remove all the pressed keys. And then we check for every um, pressed key in new keyboard. Notice it's a length, so it's an array. Um, and then we are just adding those keys. Now, keys are these. Um, they essentially have the name of your key, the state of the key, so it starts out as one and then after it's updated once it's two, that way you know that it's been um, it's been held down. Um, and then here we're actually processing what the key is. Um, so sometimes, like with the space key, you're going to want it to be something different than what the key's name is. Um, anyway, here's all letters Again, I'm going to give you this file, so it's not really all that important, but A to Z. Um, if you have um, non-English characters uh, in your list, then you're going to need to add those right there. And just keep adding on to the end all the things that you have. Um, past that, this is just extra stuff. I didn't delete it because it was, I won't say a pain in the butt for me to, to figure all this stuff out, but it was... Uh, Something I don't, I didn't enjoy, so I left it all in. This is numpad buttons and all that kind of stuff. So it's all there. 
Um, so we're processing the keys from the keyboard state into these keys. And you might wonder why I'm not just using the ones in the mono game framework. And the reason for that is because with key bindings, it becomes a lot easier to do it this way. Um, so eventually we'll do key bindings. Um, and yeah, you, you'll see why it's important. Um, up here, get pressed. So this is going to just search through pressed keys, which is that list. And we load it here. Um, and we're searching for the key that we send in. So for instance, if we were looking for A, we'd pass in A, it would search through. And if it found a pressed key named A, it would return true. Otherwise, it's going to return false for us. Um, we have old update. We we'll call this directly at the very end of a frame. And the reason we do that is because it will um, take the new state, make it the old state, and be prepared to start the next frame updating the new state. Um, it's just how it works best. If you um, do them at the same time, which you could do at the beginning of the frame, you could set new to old and then redo your new. Um, but then you have to test for it and with, with a null test, which is technically one if statement more than you would have. Um, is it a big deal? No. If you chose to do it that way, it's fine. Um, but it's, it's slightly less efficient. Um, all right. So this is our keyboard state. Uh, our keyboard class um, and then what we're going to do is we are going to um, create a global for it so we'll come down here we'll say public static MC keyboard keyboard now because it's lowercase it's no longer the keyword so you can just call it keyboard and that's fine then we'll come into main we will go to the initialization load content not initialize right here and uh, we will say globals dot keyboard equals new mc keyboard very simple it doesn't have any arguments so we just create it there which works we'll come down into update and pretty much the first thing you need in in your update should be your keyboard and mouse and input updating so we're going to do globals.keyboard.update. Very simple. And right before you call base.update is where you want to call your uh, keyboard.update old. Um, one of very few things in this game that we'll need to have an update to, to more than one update. Um, but there it is. Uh, your mouse will do the same thing um, when, we, when we add mouse support. All right, so now that we have our keyboard working, which is awesome, we are going to come over here and we are going to actually create some more files for organization. I guess I should leave this open for you guys, huh? Um, and then we are going to add a file called gameplay. Um, for whatever reason, I like to capitalize P that folder exists because this is the second time I've, I've made this let me go through and delete that real fast all right so we'll come over here we'll create uh, a new uh, new folder we're gonna call it gameplay and then inside there we'll create another folder called world we're gonna move world inside gameplay all of this will come apparent when we go and do menus um, but for now, you know, just humor me, move world into gameplay and create that. And then here we're going to add a new item. And this is going to be the hero class. And as always, we're going to grab our includes. You guys can sort through which includes are needed in each file whenever you want to for the purpose of the tutorials. I'm not really worried about those things, so um, we will just skip it by using my standard ones. All right, so we have public class hero, public hero. Oops. Now, um, the thing about hero is it is something that needs to onto the screen, so we are going to have an inherent um, basic 2D 
In doing so, the constructor will need to call the constructor from basic 2D. So here's that constructor. And we'll move those those uh, arguments there. And then we will uh, have to say base, meaning call the base um, or one step above it in the inheritance uh, tree um, constructor. And so we need to pass, pass the uh, arguments over. And we got that. OK. Now, let's say, for instance, that you knew what position position it would always draw in you could actually just say like you know new vector 2 you know, 0 0 or whatever um, and then you could choose not to bring in position um, so this would be just feeding it a static thing um, you'll find that there are lots of times where that something similar to that case is the correct thing to do in this case we're not going to do that we're just going to use it in the exact same way we're going to come down here and say public override. For whatever reason, I kept calling it uh, something else the other day. Um, but uh, yeah, it's override. So and then update. And you'll, you'll notice that it calls the base update. That's almost always a good thing. Sometimes you'll remove this line because you actually don't want the update from the parent class to, to run. So um, and then we're going to override the draw function as well. Um, and now we've set up our hero class. So um, yay. In world, we're going to come in. And instead of basic 2Ds, now these are heroes. So we're going to change out the constructor, change out the variable type. Um, uh, so if I'm missing. Missing something here. Maybe this is broken. Let's build it real fast, see if it fixes. It fixed, yeah, OK. Telesense was just a little off. All right, uh, that's in. World deals with that. And then, um, as we already know, world's called here in main. Main calls hero. So now in hero, what we're going to do is we're going to add stuff from our keyboard class. So we're going to say if globals keyboard dot uh, get Pressed, I think is the answer. Yep, get press. And then we are going to ask about A. So we are asking if the key, the keyboard key A is pressed. And if that is pressed, what we want to do is we want to move our character to the left, right? Correct, I should say. Um, and to do that, what we need to do is change its position. So um, in basic 2D, you have a variable called position. And what we're, all we're going to do is say position equals new vector 2. You actually can't change x and y independently. You have to create a new vector 2, which is not a big deal because it's literally just creating a two float uh, object, which is what we're doing anyway. So it's, it's not going to have an overhead for you. Um, and we're going to keep it the same position except we're going to move it to the left one. Now, I guess I need to cover this real fast. Um, in game development, in every different engine or library set I've ever seen, now that doesn't mean that it's always, but um, zero, zero is your top left. And height and width of your resolution is the bottom right. So positive goes this way. And negative goes this way. Right? So if we want to go to the left, that arrow goes to the left. It's negative 1. Now, here's the thing. Why is inverted compared to what you would have ever learned in math class? Um, it's In math class, you know, positive y would have gone up here. But instead, it goes down. So to go up is negative. Um, just something to wrap your head around. It takes a second to think about. But once you get the hang of it, it's not a big deal. Um, all right. So we have A should move our guy to the left. We're going to test our code real fast. So let me build it and run it. 
um, and then I will drag our little dude over and if I push a right now there he goes he moves okay great that works we have one directional movement not bad but we definitely want to have our other directions so um, for organization's sake I do s next because s is moving the opposite direction and then I will do the negative button I'm sorry not s that's just my brain not working D and then uh, I will do the negative button which is W and then the positive button which is S and the reason I do that is just because it goes negative positive negative positive um, and then we need to take our negatives here put them there and then this one's a positive alright now when we run this we should have eight directional movement because we'll also have the diagonals because these are ifs instead of if else's they'll allow for diagonal movement if you do not want to allow for diagonal movement then you must use if else's or some other way to stop the movement from happening um, but if else is probably the best way to go all right let's build it let's make sure our guy runs here he is there's a w d s so they all work the diagonals work everything works all right awesome that concludes the active part of this tutorial the next tutorial I want to do will deal with rotation and so after that we'll be ready to start doing some stuff that's a little bit more fun um, but all of this is set up we'll get we've got a keyboard class here we'll get radio movement in then we'll have to get our mouse class in and then yeah it, it'll get better um, and more fun so uh, thank you for taking the time and uh, watching this and I hope you guys learned something uh, if you have any comments throw a comment below if you're enjoying this content make sure you push the like button so that other people see the content and push subscribe so that uh, you see when the next video comes out I am trying to put out quite a few of these per week um, and I would love for everybody to get to see the work and to to learn how to make games um, I find it to be incredibly fun and I hope you guys do too Alright, thank you very much and I will see you next time.